Tech TV US Canada brings you news and views from White House and State Department's press briefings. Hi everybody. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. A uh, couple announcements to start out with, actually several announcements, so um, get comfortable as I say when we have a lot to go over. Uh, first off, I'd like to uh, wish all of you a happy International Yoga Day. Uh, last year, I recall, we uh, had forgotten it. And so, uh, where are our friends here who practice yoga? Boyle is the one. Boyle, yeah. Okay, there, we've got one person in the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, a happy International Yoga Day, everyone. Uh, it is celebrated around the world to recognize yoga's many benefits to the mind and the body. Uh, the observance was launched by the United Nations in 2015 with U.S. support thanks to the initiative of Indian Prime Minister Modi. Today, we're also celebrating another significant achievement with our Indian friends. I'm pleased to announce today that the United States will hold its India 2 plus 2 dialogue with the United States. It will be held here at the State Department on July the 6th. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis will host the Indian External Affairs Minister along with the Minister of Defense for meetings that will focus on strengthening the strategic and defense cooperation as the United States and India jointly address challenges in the Indo-Pacific region and also beyond. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, say this on behalf of the entire State Department. I'd like to express our sincere gratitude and best wishes to German Ambassador Peter Wittig, who marked his last official day yesterday as German Ambassador to the United States. Over the course of nine years in which he served here in the United States, he played a critical role in deepening mutual understanding and strengthening relations between our two great countries. Wishing him the best of luck in his next posting with his family. Uh, next, Matt, an issue I know that you're following closely. In Bahrain, I'd like to mention that we are following closely the case of Ali Salman, the former Secretary General of the dissolved al Wafak opposition political party, who was under investigation for allegedly collaborating with Qatar against the government of Bahrain during the events of 2011. We welcome today's verdict acquitting Ali Salman along with his co-defendants. Today's acquittal removes a potential barrier to political reconciliation in Bahrain, and we urge Bahraini prosecutors not to pursue an appeal of the judge's ruling. We repeat our, recall, our call on the government of Bahrain to release Ali Salman from prison and grant relief from his previous conviction. Uh, next week. Is that, is that coming out as a written statement as well? Um, or, or can, can I'm not. It, I'm not can, sure. Can it, do, you, do you need it to? Do you need it to? Okay, we'll look into Thank that you. for you. Uh, easy enough. Uh, next, I'd like to announce our deputy secretary's upcoming travels. Uh, deputy Secretary John Sullivan will travel to the Netherlands, Denmark, Algeria, and Morocco. He will begin his trip in The Hague to lead the U.S. delegation to a special session on the Conference of the States Parties of the OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. He will underscore U.S. determination to prevent and detour the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons and also our commitment to ensuring that all responsible for the use of chemical weapons in Syria and elsewhere are held accountable. Next, he'll lead a delegation to Copenhagen to participate in Ukraine Reform Conference to reaffirm the U.S. support for Ukraine's sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity in its internationally recognized borders, and also reiterate our conviction that the success of Ukraine depends on the implementation of serious structural reforms. On the sidelines of that conference, the deputy will also meet with the Ukrainian Prime Minister and Denmark's Foreign Minister to discuss bilateral and regional matters, including energy security. The deputy will next travel to Algeria to meet with government officials and participate in the fifth annual U.S.-Algeria Counterterrorism Dialogue to reaffirm our strong partnership and shared efforts to promote regional stability and combat terrorism. His last stop will be Morocco, where he will meet with leaders to discuss a range of issues, including Morocco's contributions to the global coalition to defeat ISIS. Um, lastly, earlier today, we had made plans uh, to brief you and provide you with an update on a medical situation affecting our colleagues in Cuba. However, someone provided the information to the press before we could come out here. Why do I mention that? Because last year when we uh, first learned about the health attacks that were affecting our colleagues in Cuba, I pledged to you personally that as soon as we learned new information uh, that you needed to be aware of, that the public needed to be aware of, that I would bring that to you and that was our intent today. Uh, there are, is now new information that is available. We learned about this uh, about 11.30 or so earlier today. 
On June 21st, following a comprehensive medical evaluation, one U.S. diplomat working at the U.S. Embassy Havana was medically confirmed to have experienced health effects similar to those that were reported by members of the U.S. Havana diplomatic community. This is the first medically confirmed case in Havana since August of 2017. The number of Americans now affected is 25. Previously, that number was 24. It is now 25. The health and well-being of our personnel remains our top priority here at the State Department. The investigation into the origin of these symptoms continues. It is an interagency effort. The interagency community continues to work diligently to determine the cause of the symptoms as well as develop mitigation measures. We informed the Cuban government of this uh, occurrence on May the 29th of this year. The Cuban government assured us that they will continue to take this seriously and are continuing their investigation. We strongly remind the Cuban government of its responsibility under the Vienna Convention to protect our diplomats. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. So, Tag TV US Canada brings you news and views from White House and State Department's press briefing.